I just wanted to have a look at whether there was any structure in the prices. So we can just use the autocorrelation function ACF to do that. So we can see if I just look at the raw data, so just the prices in our test data, because remember we uh, we had the training data and the test data. In the test data, it seems to be correlated maybe for 20 days. So today is correlated to yesterday, it's correlated to two days ago, three days ago, and as we go back, the correlation gets weaker and weaker. If I look at the training data set, it doesn't seem to fall off that nicely. So, you know, in the last 100 days of data, it does seem to be more well behaved. While in the training data, the correlation is far longer term, it, it appears. There's more two time series than what we're going to be doing here. The use of ACF and that kind of thing was motivated by this video. So I'll have the links to the videos in the description below this video. You can see it here as well. So now get going. So we just want to look at time series today. For that, we just use the function arima. The first argument is the data that we're working with. So in this case, in this case, ts underscore test. Then we have order is equal to c110. You have three parameters within ARIMA. So it's not just one type of fitting. You can be looking at the, uh, you can be looking at if you change these parameters, it changes. What type of things it's looking at, what it's fitting, and that kind of thing. As I mentioned, time series does have complexity. So here we have actually two videos, so, and we have the links below the video. So they go into time series in greater depth. So there's the data science videos and the analytics university one. So we just use the ARIMA command, give it some data and then select the parameters that we want to use. So then it just creates our model. Very much like the linear model 
that we did before. So next we just create a forecast again like we did with the linear model. So we just go forecast, give it the model which we just fit. So that you know so this is aware of the training data, of the historical data. Then we just tell it how many intervals, how many days we want to forecast. So now all we have to do is plot. So we can see here the trading data, historical data that we have, and then we have our forecast. So this is the forecast line, these are error bars. Well, confidence intervals, so it should say be, to be in this area 95% of the time and in the broader envelope 99% or something like that. We can see in this video we get this similar kind of forecast. So they use the 110 model here as well. Though I actually picked 110 from some other source. So that's basically time series. You know, you can go into the theory and the background in greater depth using the some of the links that we mentioned and this is the kind of results that we can get from it. Next I just want to finish up with the forecasting because we it, it just it is just using a different function. In fact if you go forecast sorry art studio gives you some of the options available so you've got the AR linear model ETS SDL I don't know what half of these are but basically to use them we just select the appropriate function. I also want to create a video about how we sh how we might trade Brexit because okay we know that the referendum was a yes what does that mean? Is this a, a great opportunity? At the moment I'm thinking that is a significant a significant enough thing to enter into a bear market. There's a huge degree of uncertainty and uh, risk has gone up. We'll look at that in that video because here it's more about just how to get time series which we did and I'll finish up on this current series of videos with a look at neural nets. Till next week.